Hello, everyone, and welcome to the WordPress Briefing, the podcast where you can catch quick explanations of the ideas behind the WordPress open source project, some insight into the community that supports it, and get a small list of big things coming up in the next two weeks. I'm your host, Josefa hayden Champosi. Here we go. Folks, this week is WordCamp US, and over the past week or so, I spent a fair amount of time talking to people about that first time experience. And as with any person who's talking about their version of a shared experience, I started thinking back to mine. I think my first experience of WordPress was not typical, though. I had never even heard of WordPress when I first went to a WordCamp. I think I think most of the time people have heard of it before, but I was just there for the plot. So, like many people in my generation, all of us old people of the internet, I was first online with things like Angel Fire and GeoCities. When I went to college, I was keeping friends and family up to date on what I was up to with a little like newsletter. And then Zanga made it to our college campus and eventually so did Facebook. And I was one of those kids kind of like half breaking sites with HTML and CSS I found online. I was changing layouts like every week to suit my mood. (laughs) Then when I graduated and found myself in a city with more talent and more competition than I'd actually accounted for and started to realize that this online stuff I'd been doing for fun might actually be something that I needed to use as a tool professionally. So I first went out and reserved my screen name everywhere I could think of. And we're talking like LiveJournal, WordPress.com, Blogger, all the things. And eventually wound up building my first site on Weebly. And it was super ugly. I'm not able to design things. I have an okay sense for a design that is good, but like left to my own devices, it's going to be what that was, which is like a tie-dye background for some reason and had everything organized into little like blocks, I guess, you know, like old magazine layouts. Uh, And it technically had everything that I wanted, but it wasn't necessarily the best version of any of those things either. I could write a little bit about myself and my services. I could add a few photos. There was a way to contact me and I could do it all by myself. And so it was a good place to start. Not long after that though, I graduated into the need for a more professional looking website and it was beautiful. I received a website, someone built it for me. It was beautiful. It had this elegant design, had a lot of custom functionality, but it was built using cold fusion. I couldn't do anything to it. I couldn't change anything. All minor changes just had to kind of wait until there was enough to make sense to use that maintenance time, that maintenance retainer that I had. (laughs) It really was just kind of formal. It was an isolated snapshot of all of the sorts of information that was required to be on the web at that time. And then later that year, I went to my first WordCamp and I moved my site over to WordPress And for the first time, I had that kind of mixture of professional expression that was on top of something that enabled my own expression. And honestly, I didn't learn much more about the software for a few years. It was doing what I needed it to do, how I needed it to be done. And that's really what mattered to me. And when I skipped a few years ahead after that, a few years later, when I was learning by organizing meetups and word camps that had speakers that I wanted to hear from, that had topics that I felt like I needed to learn more about, what I remember most about that learning period for me is that I knew that I wasn't the first person to run into any of my problems, which meant that a solution was probably already out there and I could find someone to come and teach us about their solution. And also, I knew that if I were running into a new problem and started breaking things left and right, there was always a way back. I was never really too far away from success. Like, I felt like I might be lost, but I still was pretty much findable. And I guess I always want that for new users of the open web now, like new members of our WordPress community. I want them to feel like the breaking of things is fine and safe, and that no mistake is irretrievable. I want us to have some place where perfection isn't the point. Now listen, I know the software is complex right now. The admin is a little mismatched. Your first choices are huge choices and there are a million places to start. So all I can say is start with what you need. And once you've got that, like the back of your hand, 
move on to what you need next and keep doing that bravely and messily until what you've got is all you ever wanted. I'm going to leave for you in the show notes a link to something called WordPress Playground. It's going to launch a little WordPress site in your browser. There will be no host. It's just all in the browser itself. And it will have the latest bundled theme on it, 2024, and the latest version of WordPress. And that's it. Go in there and click around on the left-hand menu. Start a post, change a page, modify the theme. Just play around a while. See if it's something that seems fun to you or valuable. Or if it's something that you can use as a time capsule for your kid. Because that sounds like a nice little mix of fun and work. (laughs) And remember, sometimes perfection's not the point. That brings us now to our small list of big things. Folks, as I mentioned at the top, WordCamp US is happening this week. It is September 17th through 20th this year quite a few more days, but that also means that we'll have quite a bit more stuff to do. If you have your tickets and haven't looked at all of the presentations occurring over the four-day event, remember to take a look at the schedule and pick out topics that are interesting. And remember, just because you picked it out before you went doesn't mean that if you get in there and it doesn't work for you, you can't choose a different topic while you're there. And as a bonus, if this is your first WordCamp that you've ever attended, I have you covered. You can check out my previous episode on all the things to remember for your first time attending a WordCamp. And we have a pretty active community as well. If you just have questions or want to get in there and say, hey, I'm going to a vegan restaurant for lunch. Who wants to join me? You can do that and you can definitely find somebody. Also, there are some upcoming WordPress meetings. So if you're not attending WordCamp US but still want to connect with the community, there are a ton of team meetings that are happening. You can find those on make.wordpress.org slash meetings, I think. So really, really easy URL to remember. You can join your fellow community members and contribute to the WordPress project there. And I also wanted to just call your attention to a few really big projects that still need a little bit of help around the project. So on the one hand, we have data liberation. That is still a really big project. But specifically, we are nearly ready to start working on some user-facing elements of that. It is being powered by Playground. And because the data liberation, the migration of one site to another is so complex, once we get those elements built into Playground, I think it also stands to fix a bunch of the problems that we have uh, across our user flow, our user experience for the project. Things like having better theme previews and being able to get a sense for what a plugin functionally will do for you versus what it says it's going to do for you and getting a sense for what the admin looks like, all of those things. And so anyone who wants to learn more about contributing to Playground or to data liberation, I absolutely encourage you to go check out those meetings, see what's happening, and get your hands a bit dirty with that. We also have a bunch of stuff happening in our community space. If you had received this podcast from somebody because they were like, hey, I know someone who might like WordPress or who has just learned WordPress and has never been to an event or any other reason that you are listening to this but don't yet know the community, there is an easier option than just jumping straight into a WordCamp like I did. You can go to a meetup. You can see there's a widget in your dashboard that'll tell you what your nearest event is. But if you put your location into that widget and nothing comes up, technically, that means that you have an opportunity to bring a bunch of people together to teach you stuff you wish you knew about your site right now. So you can wander over into your dashboard and see those, or you can also head over to the community area on make.wordpress.org, and anybody over there is happy to help you get started. And let me tell you, it is a very low effort sort of thing to do. Here again, perfection's not the point. And so that, my friends, is your small list of big things. Don't forget to follow us on your favorite podcast app or subscribe directly on wordpress.org news. You'll get a friendly reminder whenever there is a new episode. If you liked what you heard today, share it with a fellow WordPresser. Or if you had questions about what you heard, you can share those with me at wpbriefing at wordpress.org. I am your host, Josefa hayden Champosi. Thank you for tuning in today for the WordPress briefing, and I'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Or tomorrow, if we're all going to WordCamp US. (laughs) 